In this video we're going to talk about the concept of parallax and how we use it to define the unit of distance in astronomy called the parsec. This will allow us to figure out the distances to the nearby stars relative to the Sun. The concept of parallax is a very old one. It's a geometric idea and how it works is that if you're observing something nearby relative to a very distant background and you move in position, the thing that you're looking at that's nearby will appear to shift in position compared to the background. And this is due to the shift in your own vantage point. So one example that you can uh, perform right now is to put a finger in front of your face. And if you do that, observe it through each eye separately. You can switch from your left eye to your right eye and then back again. And what you'll notice is that compared to the background, the finger that you're holding in front of your face will appear to switch back and forth, left and right. Also, the farther away that you move your finger from your face, the smaller that shift will appear. That's also part of the parallax concept. And because of this idea, we can apply it to other situations. For example, the Earth moving around the Sun in its orbit over the course of a year will actually affect the appearance in position of nearby stars relative to very distant background stars. Let me show you how this works. Let's say that in some year the Earth is positioned like so in its orbit around the Sun in January. If we draw a line of sight from the Earth to a nearby star and then onward to background stars, what we would see in our view is like what I have in this box. It says in January we see this from the Earth. And so here's that grouping of a yellow, red, and blue star which I'm circling right now with my cursor. And then here's a grouping of a yellow, blue, and yellow star right here. But there's an extra star there, and that's the nearby one that just appears to be in front of these three from our vantage point in January. What if we go to another part of the year? In July, we'll have a completely different vantage point. And so in July, from the Earth, if we look towards the nearby star, it will not appear to be in front of the grouping of the two yellow and blue stars. It will appear to be in front of the three stars, the yellow, red, and blue star. And so our view would be like this. The nearby star will appear to have shifted from the rightmost part of our view to the leftmost part. What if we're in between July and January over the course of the year? then when we look out towards the nearby star, it will appear in the middle of that view. And so over the course of the year, the nearby star will appear to shift across that field of view from our vantage point. And so I'll go back again to January. Watch the box and how the yellow nearby star appears to move into a different part of the view. So I'll go from, from January to July, and then somewhere between July and January, that nearby star will be in the middle. There's something else we can do here. We can analyze a triangle that connects the Earth to the Sun to the nearby star. The distance from the Earth to the Sun on average is well known. It's 93 million miles, and astronomers define this distance to be what we call an astronomical unit, 1 AU. And so in this triangle, we know that it is a right triangle, that there is a 90-degree uh, angle between the uh, Earth, the Sun, and the nearby star. I'll, I'll denote that with a little box. And then I'll place the value that I know for one side of the triangle on the triangle, the 93 million miles, or 1 AU. The angle that I'm interested in is this interior angle connecting the line of sight to the line between the sun and the nearby star. I'm going to call, I'm going to call that pi. 
That is what astronomers refer to as the parallax angle. I've also listed here three of the uh, geometric relationships for right triangles. You might have heard of this sine, cosine, and tangent, and how you can determine, given the sine, cosine, or tangent of an interior angle in a right triangle, relative to the sides of that triangle. The one that we're interested in, however, is the tangent of the parallax angle. The tangent of the parallax angle is equal to the value of the opposite side of that angle, which is 93 million miles, or 1 AU, and the value for the adjacent side. And so tangent is opposite over adjacent. If we figure this out, the distance to a star is equal to 1 AU divided by the tangent of the parallax angle. All I did was rearrange some of the uh, uh, values in this relationship. But if we figure out this distance, even given a value of, of the parallax angle, the units come out in astronomical units, AUs, which are far too big. The units come out to be in astronomical units, or AUs, which are not large enough for the distances to the nearby stars. It turns out that stars are actually really far away. For example, if the Sun, which is a typical star, was the size of an orange, and we placed that orange in New York, the nearest star would be also the size of an orange, but it would be over in Southern California. I don't know if you can see it, but I just placed a Earth right next to the orange sun. It's much smaller than that, and they are very close together. The size of our solar system is extremely small compared to the size of the distance between our sun and the nearest star to us. How can we determine what to do here? Well, let's go back to our example of the nearby star that we're observing over the course of a year. Well, in one year, we see an apparent shift in the star's position. The size of that shift is an angle. It's the interior angle between the two line of sights from opposite ends of the orbit. So from January to July, that's the biggest angle that's possible over the course of the year for this nearby star. The interior angle is the size of this entire shift, which I've marked out with a, a straight line in the box up here. We measure angles generally in degrees, but for measurements like this, we're looking at stars that are so far away, degrees as a unit of measurement are too large, and so we have to break it down even smaller. We measure it in fractions of a degree, which are called arc seconds. The parallax angle is half of that big angle that I just defined. And so if you measure the big angle over the course of the year, you just take half, and that's the interior angle, or the parallax angle, for this uh, right triangle that we defined earlier. This leads us to the unit that we call the parsec. A parsec is the distance to a star that has a parallax angle of one arc second. That's where the word parsec comes from, parallax angle of one arc second. If we figure out how many AUs are in one parsec, it turns out that one parsec is 206,265 AU. You can see why astronomers don't want to use AUs, astronomical units, as the unit of distance for uh, nearby stars. We need something else. And the parsec turns out to be a natural unit coming from the geometry of the situation. If the nearby star is very close to us, then the parallax angle will be large, because the closer the star is to us, the bigger that connecting angle will be, and therefore the bigger the parallax angle will be. But if a star is very far away, then its parallax angle will be smaller. It will appear to shift a smaller amount over the course of the year. And so, what this tells us 
is that we can use parallax to determine the distance to nearby stars. All a parsec is, is the distance used to describe how far away these stars are. The closest star to us is called Proxima Centauri, and it's about 1.2 parsecs away. In miles, that's 23 trillion miles. There is a limit to the distance to stars that we can use this method for. Parallax is only good to about 1,000 parsecs, and that's because beyond that, stars have such a small parallax angle as to be not measurable with our current technology. And so geometric parallax can only get us out to about a thousand parsecs, but it turns out there's plenty of stars within that distance, and so you can begin to measure your cosmic distances in this way.